Welcome to Deep in the Heart, from deep in the heart of Texas, San Antonio. I'm Ann Helmke and I direct the Peace Center here and it's good to have you with us again today. It is our hope in Deep in the Heart that whoever's watching this filming and this program that you'll know that there are people in the United States and people specifically in Texas who are committed to peace and justice and who work all the time in terms of nonviolence and education, speaking around the United States, writing books, making documentaries, forming organizations. Um, we plan to interview people from San Antonio and anybody who's traveling through. And today we're really fortunate because we have someone from San Antonio and we also have someone who's traveling through. So um, we're looking forward to hearing from both uh, Aziz Shihab and his daughter Naomi Shihab Nai. Aziz Shihab left his native Palestine in 1950 to study journalism. He married an American and had two children, then settled in St. Louis where he had a distinguished journalism career. In 1993, his brother wrote him about his mother's health and her pending death, and so he went back to be with her. His latest book, Does the Land Remember Me, is a memoir from his time spent there. Um, and we hope to hear a little bit about that today. It was during that time, those optimistic days following the signing of the Oslo Accords. He now lives in Dallas. We also have with us today his daughter, so we're doubly fortunate this day, Naomi Shiabnai. She likes to describe herself as a wandering poet and we like to call her our poet because she lives here in San Antonio. Um, when she was uh, 14, her, her father packed up the family and they moved to Jerusalem where they lived for a year. Naomi has written a couple books about that experience, City's Secrets, which is a children's story about her grandmother uh, who actually died at the age of beautiful 106 years and also Habibi, which is a young adult novel, yeah, which has won numerous literary awards. So we're really grateful that you're both with us today, and we have kind of a living legacy sitting here with us. And, and so we're just very excited about hearing about your experiences and your work. Um, Naomi, uh, your father starts his new book with your poem, Jerusalem from 19 Varieties of Gazelle, your book as well. Would you mind indulging us and in reading that poem for us? Thank you so much. I'm honored to read it and honored to be here with you, Anne, and, and with my dear dad. The poem has a quote from the Swedish poet Tommy Olofsson at the top. He wrote, let's be the same wound if we must bleed. Let's fight side by side even if the enemy is ourselves. I am yours, you are mine. Jerusalem. I'm not interested in who suffered the most. I'm interested in people getting over it. Once, when my father was a boy, a stone hit him on the head. Hair would never grow there. Our fingers found the tender spot and its riddle the boy who has fallen stands up. A bucket of pears in his mother's doorway welcomes him home. The pears are not crying. Later, his friend who threw the stone says he was aiming at a bird, and my father starts growing wings. Each carries a tender spot, something our lives forgot to give us. A man builds a house and says, I am native now. A woman speaks to a tree in place of her son, and olives come. A child's poem says, I don't like wars, they end up with monuments. He's painting a bird with wings wide enough to cover two roofs at once. Why are we so monumentally slow? Soldiers stalk a pharmacy, big guns, 
little pills. If you tilt your head just slightly, it's ridiculous. There's a place in this brain where hate won't grow. I touch its riddle, wind, and seeds. Something pokes us as we sleep. It's late, but everything comes next. Ziz, do you like listening to her poetry as much as Every we do? Every time I listen to Naomi, I get very moved. I, uh, there were times when I really had tears. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you write poetry as well? No, I'm afraid not. I'm having a hard time writing prose. <laughs> <laughs> so where did she no. get that? Uh, I guess from God. From God. We just, I just yeah. love listening to her read. Yeah. Oh, that's very sweet of you. But but I think I got it partly from the attention paid to voices in our house when I was growing up because um, our father told us stories before we went to sleep every night and we loved his stories. They were something delicious to look forward to even for kids who didn't want to go to bed. We knew that the stories would be coming and that was a great pleasure. and. Our mother read to us, and especially to me, once she discovered my appetite for it, she read poems. This is before I could read myself. And I just loved that um, clear attention to language, both in story and in poem. And, mm -hmm. and so I felt uh, that in our household, there was a, a care about words and uh, grammar and description, how to tell a story so that someone would calm down, settle, and listen to it. Uh, that was very much part of the atmosphere. So, you know, I think that helped make me a poet at a young mm -hmm. age. And speaking of stories, Aziz, would you tell us the story behind the title of, the, of your book, Does the Land Remember Me? Well, it's uh, Naomi's son who gave me the title. And he was at the time, what? About 12. About 12. We were in Naomi's house, and I had had the idea of uh, of a book, and I, we started talking about what would you name it, and he just looked and he said, "Does the land remember me?" I was talking to them about the land and my struggle with the land and so on, um, because I have been almost obsessed with buying land in Texas to replace the land I lost, or I thought I was going to lose there, and I lost there, my father rather. So he said, he gave us that, and it <laughs> stuck with me, and when I started writing the book, I thought, what better title? And that's where it came from. From a 12-year-old, from, from your grandson. From a 12-year-old, but it fits in so well, really. It, uh, the land, I think, is the main problem in Palestine. And the more I think about it, the more I think the wars that are happening there now, especially in Palestine, are recent wars. They are not ancient wars, as televangelists like to tell you, or as Jewish people like to tell you. I think it's a new war. It's a war that started in 1948, and it's a war about land and the ownership of the of land there, and greed, and uh, when I was writing the book, you know, to tell you why I started writing the book, when I first came to this country, I was speaking to a Rotary Club in Kansas. I used to do a lot of speaking on the Middle East. And the man who introduced me uh, said that now we hear from a good Muslim. I said, Muslim? He wanted to say Muslim. Mm -hmm. oh. Then I thought, well, it's probably because of ign his ignorance, until I found out later that he was a minister of a church. I thought he ought to know better. But that stayed with me for so long, and I found out that that mistake is often not said because of ignorance, but it's said because they wanted to attack Islam or the Muslim religion. And